Okay guys, welcome back to whatever episode of my tutorial on how to use OpenAI Retro and the neat library to evolve a neural network that will play Sonic the Hedgehog. In the last episode, we'd set up our eval genomes function and iterated through each of the genomes, which all come from the number, the population size here. So we set the population size in the configuration file to 20 and uh, that gives us 20 genomes. Uh, we create a network, a recurrent network in this particular case, with that genome and the config file. And then we do some stuff and we pull the screenshot of the emulator uh, out. That's what reset here does. This gives us the image. We, put, we input a flattened version of that image. It becomes 1D and uh, grayscale. We put it through our network, net, 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 net. And the output looks like looks like this. Um, it's not useful yet because you see all these values are not zero or one because the emulator requires button presses which either need to be on or off, so zero or one. Um, right now it crashes when we run it. Let's let's run it. Show you. But you can see that it generates at least one output from the network. Look, there it is. It's beautiful. That's the so beautiful. So everything's working so far. We just need to finish finish the situation. We need to record the um, next. We need to record the result of inputting this into our environment, which happens to be the emulator. We need to record if we got a reward from that, whether or not the emulator is done. Uh, and the info of all the variables that we're recording in the data file, all these guys. Um, then we need to do stuff with it, like we need to figure out how much fitness to add, uh, a whole bunch of stuff. I'll, I'll go through it. The most important stuff to do now, though, is to uh, get the new observation reward done in info variables. So we do that with the step function. This is actually the thing that increments the emulator state by one. Uh, and we put the, we literally put the output of the neural network directly into this. Uh, and that's going to, actually we only need to do one more thing. We need to clear the um, array and then it should just run. So we're just going to clear out the old array so that it doesn't, because we're, we're pending, right? We, we don't want it to get twice as big every time. This should now just run. Sonic should do stuff. We'll see what happens. And he's <laughs> wrong way, Sonic. You friggin' idiot. Uh, one thing you're gonna learn from doing this is that neural networks do dumb stuff a lot of the time. Okay, but that's the uh, Sonic's behavior right now is being driven by the neural network. Actually, let's let's print that out so you can see it in better detail. Uh, we're going to print. And then output, output, and let's see, let's do his input and the output. So the input is uh, imgare, and and then output. This is basically the input, the output. That's going to be, that's not going to be visually very useful. Let's do the len. Uh, you'll just have to take my word for it. <laughs> Crash factory? Do I not know how to type things? What's wrong? What's the problem? Python is shutting down, and then output is not defined. I can't spell, guys. So, yeah. Oh, Sonic's running left again. <laughs> Let's go. We'll look at this. So, the. Um, there you go, 1120. That is the inputs. So that's what we're inputting into the thing, and this is the result of that. Okay? Um, now we need to record fitness after over a certain amount of time. So we're going to set a... Um, we're going to do some stuff where we, we make Sonic uh, done if he doesn't achieve a certain goal in a certain amount of frames. That's why we're recording frames and counters and stuff. Okay? So good. We've recorded, that's good. 
But anyway, I was curious. This is Kate. This comes with KDE. It's a phenomenal editor. I absolutely love it. You can you can use Vim or whatever you'd like. I, I personally just really like Kate. I don't know why. Um, so we're going to record the X position. We're going to grab that from the info variable. If you guys recall from the earlier videos, info contains all of the variables we're recording from the the uh, memory addresses of the um, game. So we got act, level, and bonus, blah, blah, blah. These are super useful, but we'll just do this simple right now. We're going to record the X value. Okay? So that's Sonic's X position. And what we're going to do is we're going to record the X position and the X position max. We're going to say if X position, X, X position is greater than X pose max, which we already set to zero, we're going to do fitness current um, plus plus equals we can either do reward but I'm just gonna do one for now okay so every time Sonic goes further to the right than he did than he's ever been he's gonna get one point and we're gonna set uh, expose max to the, the the time when he does that okay so hopefully that's clear that's that's how we're gonna do that. Um, <clears throat> um, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna we're gonna write a little function that's going to make Sonic uh, reset a counter every time he hits the a new best fitness. This is separate from the previous one because if you use the reward functions differently, it it works differently. But this is just how I do this. This is also very clear. If fitness current is greater than the current max fitness, do you love my variable names? How good are they? They're the best, guys. Uh, the current max fitness equals fitness current. And we are going to set a counter equal to zero. Okay? And if that isn't true, we're going to add one to a counter. Okay, so every time he achieves a better max fitness, again, this is the same currently as this one, but if you had multiple different variables you were tracking with different functions on how you were recording fitnesses, this would be helpful. Uh, every time he gets a new max fitness, we reset counter to zero. Otherwise, we add one to counter. Now what we're going to do is we're going to use counter to determine done. So we're going to do two things. If done, or counter equals whatever we want, but we're going to pick 250, um, done equals true, and we'll do, uh, actually we'll come back to that. So basically this here, done is the variable that comes out of the function, done is set in the scenario file, it's currently set to um, if Sonic loses three lives, he'll be done. So if done becomes true, We've said done equals true, it's kind of silly, but otherwise if the counter is equal to 250, and if you recall the, the counter adds one every time Sonic doesn't get a new max fitness. So basically this genome gets 250 attempts to move to the right one pixel. Every time it does that it starts from zero and it gets to get another 250. Um, I guess we can also print, this is helpful, we'll print the genome ID and the fitness current. So we'll print the end result. And then finally, the only other thing we have to do is we need to set the, in the, each genome has a fitness function. This is all set up again when we did the population at the beginning. This guy here does that for us. Uh, and we're going to set the, the genome fitness equal to fitness current. Um, the result of this is that until one of these conditions are set, he's going to keep going through because uh, it's while not done, right? So until we're done or counter equals 250, we're going to keep setting the genome fitness to current. Um, and that's, honestly guys, that's going to be it. <laughs> this is going to work now. So here we go. Are you ready? It's going to be exciting. So at the start, Sonic is looking up, 
a lot. Uh, he went 250 frames of looking up and then did nothing. Now he's going to duck. Oh, and go left and roll. So these are the results of inputting the images through the network uh, in the default random state. I should probably make it so it prints out the the genome while we're watching it so we can watch like the activations occur. Oh, he jumped. That's Andy. He's going to do this 20 times and then he's going to evolve. Hopefully that happens in the next three minutes because I want to... Uh, oh, that time he had a, uh, a fitness of 26. That's because he went to the right a little bit. So he's only getting one because he's never going to the right. Every time he goes to the right, he's going to get one or he's going to get more points. So currently seven is our most fit. Yeah, he likes going left for some reason. I don't, I don't know why. The default values I set in the config file make him go left. Left and twitch dance. Oh, there we go. Going to the right. This is really good. So this is... Oh, and jumping. He's going to get far. Look at this. Well done, Sonic. Jump. Jump, friend. Jump. Toast. Uh, 460. That's an extremely good value. If you recall, in the config file, we set the max fitness to 5,000. No, 100,000. This is the. This is going to never happen. <laughs> we'll have to fix that. Uh, come on, we're at 17. I just want to show you one full generation, and then and then we'll come back next episode and fix the config file. 19 and 20. Okay, so watch down the left here. He's going to do a bunch of. Um, calculations he's going to evolve the network and it should oh i haven't set up the stats yet so it's actually not going to show it uh okay so yeah we'll set up the stats next time you can see it better we're now in the second generation so seven did a 26 these are the existing genomes that are being evolved so that's our 26 there from seven one and two well one and two are, i guess three now is doing better uh well, that's that's interesting. He's obviously doing better. What you're gonna see as it goes is all of the individual genomes start to do better up to a point. Five seventy. That's that's pretty good. Come on, Sonic. Three fifty nine. Pretty good. Okay, so uh, when we come back, we'll add in some statistics so you guys can see more results as it goes. And uh, maybe I'll show you what the neural network is seeing. Okay, see ya.